So you have four valves in your heart and each one of them can either become too leaky or it can become too tight. One of them is called regurgitation, the leaky, and too tight is called stenosis. For patients who have bad valves, valves that either don't open well or don't close well, a lot of them we can fix and we can repair their valves. But for some patients who have valve disease that's fairly advanced, those valves need to be replaced and then we replace those as well. We've been able to become more and more minimally invasive with the way that we can even replace valves. The most successful area that this has been utilized is with the aortic valve, but we are also working to provide minimally invasive options for the mitral valve as well. Here at New York Presbyterian Weill Cornell Medicine, we're proud to be a part of many of the clinical studies that look at new devices for managing valvular disease with minimally invasive techniques. Oftentimes for the mitral valve, patients will have been followed for their mitral valve for many years. Usually I'm seeing patients who are still pretty healthy. They have a hard time wrapping their heads around the fact that they have to have surgery because they're asymptomatic, they feel fine. It's very difficult for them to feel like it's the right thing to do to have surgery because they don't even feel bad. Basically all valves, if they're failing, will cause the heart to fail because the heart has to work a lot harder than it's supposed to because it's working with one of the valves not working. So you can have heart failure, you can have arrhythmias or irregular heartbeats that develop from the damage that's done to the heart. You can have the heart become very weak and not able to pump very well. A lot of people don't want to have their breastbone cut and so a lot of the minimally invasive options either cut less of the sternum with a much smaller incision or don't cut the sternum at all and instead go between the ribs. That helps patients because they recover faster, they have need for transfusions after surgery, and just cosmetically they're left with smaller incisions. The robot really enhances mitral valve surgery. The robot has a camera that is a 3D camera and it is 10 times magnification relative to what your eyes are. So you can see all the parts of the valve much more easily. And then the robotic arms, which I control, and the robotic instruments have 360 degree range of motion. When you are operating robotically, you can see better and move better than when you do one of the cases without the robot. For me, it's very routine to use the robot. That is my comfort zone. And that's exactly who you want to be doing your robotic surgery. Somebody who feels that it's a routine procedure, not something, a big grand event that they do every so often. You want somebody who feels like just a normal day at work when you're doing something with the robot. At a place like New York Presbyterian Weill Cornell, we are a tertiary or even what is now referred to as a quaternary referral center. If you look at the acuity and the complexity of what we do, we are focused on those patients who have a higher degree of complexity and a higher risk profile simply because number one, we have the experience to do it and do it well, and number two, we have the resources available to take care of them. There's a reason that we consistently are ranked number one for cardiac care in New York. A lot goes into our patients' outcomes, not just within the operating room itself. The majority of the patient's care occurs in the post-operative setting, and we have a team of very dedicated staff that all contribute to our patients' good outcomes from their surgeries. Thank you.